Whoop. Whoop. Okay. Here's what the deal is, folks. We got us a, a brand new grown man record night. We're live on Ustream. Uh, live on Ustream, like we do every damn Friday night. And uh, we're going to welcome, once again, our good friend Carl the Envelope, coming all the way from Wilmington. Carl? Good to be here. Man, it's good to see once you, Once again? Good to see you. Hope you had a good holiday. Good man, give, him, give him a good holiday. Great holiday. Oh, yeah. Yep. Carl had a good holiday. <laughs> Kevin it low-key. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. Uh, just bought a new car, man. You bought a new car. What'd you buy, man? Subaru Forester. Oh, yeah. I know the guys here on the Grown Man Record Night scene, cameraman and Mike, both rocked the Subarus. And, That's uh, right. We had to do it. Had a little accident. Uh, oh, no. What'd you do? You drinking and driving? <laughs> no, no. It wasn't our fault, man. The, no, wife, the wife got hit, got rear-ended. It got a little happy check there. Yeah. More than the car was worth, so uh, yeah. Went ahead and dropped it on the new, uh, dropped it on the new Subaru. Nice, that's a good yeah. choice, man. I've been rocking yeah. my Subaru. I got a WRX. It's a 2002. I bought it in 2003. I've got 240,000 miles on it, and I don't take care of vehicles, just like I don't take care of myself or my life <laughs> or, or your house <laughs> or my house or anything that involves me or my person or my wife. It's in terrible shape. But I'm doing pretty good considering the shape of man. But it's still rocking. That's that's my Jerry Reed Cheers. tribute right there. <laughs> I'm doing that. pretty good considering the shape of man. Um, so uh, man, it's cold as shit up here, man. You guys come up from the Absolutely. coast. Absolutely. Is it warmer down at the coast? Not much. What five ten degrees? Oh really? Is this hey. cold? It don't matter. I mean, North Carolina folks. I know some of you cats up north are probably laughing at us, but I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, seriously, we're in single we're digits. Freezing. We're in really? single. It's single digits for real. Yeah, I mean the high down in Wilmington today was 31 degrees. So, okay. I mean it didn't get above freezing today. Grounds got a nice solid freeze on top of it. We even saw snow the other day. Saw snow mm. a couple days ago. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't see that much down at the beach. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, but it's uh it's cold up here. It's it's serious business. So like I said, we're um we're live. Absolutely. You are looking live. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're actually in North Carolina. Not really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, we're live on the Ustream channel. We do this every Friday night. What is it? Flickering? We've got yeah. some flickering. Who's flickering? Look at that. Special oh. effects. we got a special oh. effects uh, genius in the house tonight. Uh, <laughs> I we're going to try some special effects. I don't know what that is. got we got a look. Okay, let's see what's yeah, going we on here. Yeah, we got a cable issue. See that cable guy? Are Whatever. Yeah. Cable guy. Huh? Cable guy. Uh, so like I said, we're live on Ustream. We do this every Friday night from 8.30p until uh, whenever the hell we feel like it. That's a cue for the Ustream graphic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman. I gotta find it first. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, we're live every Friday night. We do this for hours and hours. We stream records. Uh, we got playing a lot of blues. It's a blues heavy uh, evening tonight. Yeah, streaming a lot of blues um, blues records this evening because you got to dig. We're going to talk about it coming up. We don't want to give away the the punchline to our lives. Oh yeah. But uh, so we stream music all night long, and then we do this little talk show in the middle, and this talk show will end up on our YouTube channel. Now we got some we got some hopping news on the YouTube channel front this evening, and this is breaking news. Uh, we have breaking news this hour. If you go to youtubecom slash Machete Miller, here's the deal. We've been hovering around mm, 98 subscribers for a little bit. We've been picking up a subscriber here and there. Here's the thing. A lot of people in the VC, the vinyl community, they do these videos where they, they it's, it's, it's a little different than what we do. Uh, I didn't really know about it when we started doing this, and I'm like, oh, look, there's a whole bunch of people that do this. Well, they do it a little differently. Uh, hey, everybody I, does it a little different. And I just used an adverb, which is pretty cool too. Hey. But they, um, a lot of people, they they get a, they get their web camera and they'll go through and say, "Here's a record I got. Here's a record I got." And it's cool because I I pull they, they pull up records and and stuff, and I'm just like, "Whoa, wait a minute, what the hell is that?" You know? And I, so I yeah. look it up, and I, that's stuff I've started looking for out in the stores and whatnot. Um, but we're one of the only like uh, record talk shows. True. Uh, uh, going around. I didn't yeah. really know that. We just kind of we like to we like to drink liquor and then. Uh, this is a one-time only original. Number one. <laughs> All right. Cool hand lube. Number one. Show that koozie. We got a weird koozie in the house, and I don't really understand it. Yeah. Look at this. Yo, Pond Beach, North Carolina. Yeah, okay. 
Cool Hand cool Luke. Cool Hand Luke. Number one, Yopon Beach NT. Now, if anybody out there knows anything about that koozie, what, let us know on Grown Man Record. Was that a place? Did Cool Hand Luke have a one custom made back? That's from the 80s. That's interesting right there. Yeah, cool Hand Luke, number one. What else? You, I mean, you going to argue yeah. that? Cool I ain't going to argue that. We're going to split hairs here? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's my dad's. Just shove it. Yeah, that's. Right, so we should run through some of the stuff we already played. Not tonight. yet, Carl. I Not got a yet. rundown. Not yet. Yeah, All right, Carl. Carl. You got a list. All right. I got. So a list. I'm jumping the gun so, here. So anyhow, my my YouTube story. We had this cat on YouTube reach out to us. Uh, I started watching his videos. A uh, gentleman named Doctor Deadwax. Okay. Doctor Deadwax. Now this guy. There's some guys out there, you know, we're kind of just, uh, we're vinyl junkies, but we don't, we know enough to get by, but we're not, we're no geniuses or anything. Oh, no. When it comes to this stuff. We're learning stuff every day. Absolutely. There's cats like Dr. Deadwax over there, and he was like, not, I mean, forget differentiating between presses. He knows, like, the engineers, because when they do their little signature in the, uh, the, yeah. the matrix, the runoff, he, um, the Deadwax, he, uh, he knows all about the, the engineers, and we're talking serious business here. Uh, you know, I, I like I know some things about some stuff, but I don't I don't know everything. Yeah, I but, know some uh, things about some stuff, but that's cool, not, man. He's, not enough, man. That's uh, but there's cats out there like that that are really putting in work and other stuff and uh, learning from them every day. Cool. So, anyhow, work. so anyhow, this cat reaches out to me on YouTube when we start talking, and he's like, uh, I can't believe you don't have a uh, uh, hundred subscribers yet, because I'm talking about doing a hundred subscriber contest. Yeah. And he's like. I'm going to take it upon myself to uh, to get you 100 subscribers before this week's over. And I'm like, all right. And so I wake up the next day, brrr, there's like a, a list of stuff in my in my inbox. And in one day's time, we went from 98 to 132 subscribers. Nice. Brilliant. So, nice. brilliant. Muchos gracias to Dr. Deadwax. Muchos gracias. He's a scholar and a gentleman. That just adds to the list of really cool people I've met doing this, uh, this vinyl shit on YouTube. Uh, all these, all these different people, are pretty cool. There's, I mean, there, there's been a couple of Weisenheimers out there. Oh, yeah. We don't want to call any names. There's been a couple. There's a couple of Weisenheimers hey, out you know here. You know what? You know what? Do you know the name? Because you should call it. That. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, I said this before off air, and I'm gonna say it again on air. You haven't made it until you have some haters. That's true. Right. People hate. Yeah, it happens. But anyhow. But we got, I mean, from this, I, I, I spent a whole day, like, uh, replying to comments and stuff. of people like, oh, shit, there's, like, a vinyl talk show? Cool, I'm going to check this out. And I, I know it's not for everybody. Uh, but, oh, and we, we do it a little different. We don't we don't just rifle through records. We do what it is we do. And I I think what it is is substance abuse is what it, what it, really, <laughs> what it really boils down to. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. But we got a cat up in Michigan asked us if we'd checked out uh, a certain uh, type of ginger ale and some barbecue chips some Michigan Originals, and he was like, if you're, if you're comfortable, I, um, I'll, I'll, you know, give me your address, and I'll send them down. I'm like, nice. dude, are you kidding? That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But all these people, like, nice. just jumping in and saying, this is awesome, you guys are cool, and uh, we're jumping on the board, and yeah. uh, even sending stuff. I just have one thing to uh, say. Yeah. If we accept anything from people, do we have to take it to the hospital and have an x-ray for razors? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about razors. I'm a cutter. Uh, <laughs> so... Even even when it comes to my eating habits, yeah. cutting is all right with me. Hey, I put it on my tombstone. Michael, yeah, yeah. cutting was all right with him. Mikey bananas. Mikey cutting bananas. Cutting's okay. Cutting's okay. Uh, uh, what else are we going to talk where about? Where are we going here? And also found out with this YouTube shit. Yeah. Um, this guy ended up hitting us up. The guy lives like uh, 30, 40 miles down the road. Right. He also uh, works in the same industry that I work in, <laughs> or used to. Now he runs a farm. So cool, man. I mean, awesome. it, it, this cat is like, we probably hit the same record stores and only found this out from doing these uh, doing these videos and getting getting the thing from Dr. Deadwax. And I'll oh, tell you yeah. what, uh, last what? thing before I close out this, this YouTube thing here. Yeah. This, we're jamming some, uh, Carl brought this up, the MZ band. Was it early, like electro hip-hop? Yeah, it's it's some strange electro hip-hop. It came in the... Uh, Early 80s in it's the uh, in the big dig if we're going to talk about that I got yeah. last week, um, but it was part of the it was part of the uh, scenario and yeah. I love it just with the cover. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you one more thing about Doctor Deadwax, and I'll tell you, 
uh, he, he left a comment on one of our videos, and he said, you, sh you should do a craft beer segment. That's true. Um, that li is true. Life is not all about PBR. So I'll tell you what. I went to our good friends. Hey there, cameraman. I went to our good friend uh, uh, Scoop's uh, beer store this afternoon, the old Brewer's Kettle up in North Carolina, and I picked up. I picked up. A, let's show this off when we come back from that uh, yeah. graphic shot there. Yeah, I picked up. I've never tried this before. It's a triple IPA. Who makes that, cameraman? I forgot to even look at it. It's out of San Diego, California. It's out of right San there. Diego. Who is? It's a triple IPA. Who uh, makes? Who makes that guy? Green Flash Brewing. Green Flash yeah. Brewing Company. It's a triple IPA. It's like 10.1 percent. But this came from the Brewers Kettle. My man Dave, I used to play in a band with. We call him Scoop. Everybody else calls him Dave. I know him as Scoop. So, uh, hey, Dr. Deadwax, man, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for hooking yeah. us up with all those subs and uh, looking out for us. And that's cool, man. That's what it's all about. So, uh, hey, we appreciate you. And while we're on the beer here, I want to jump in real quick. Jump in, Carl. I'm reading a book right now called The Audacity of Hops. It's a history of microbrewing in the U.S. since Prohibition. It's brilliant. It's a straight history of all the microbrews. A book? Yeah, it's a book. You say since prohibition, does that mean it's still illegal? Or has there been a no. re is there a rehabition? Well when was the rehabition? Nineteen thirty three. So the there was a rehabition. Why don't there we hear about the rehabition? That's true. Well it's the repeal of prohibition, so, so I guess it is a rehabition. Right? Hey Steve exactly. Fever Steve Fever says Cool Hand Luke appears to be a Christian emo band. Really? I don't oh, know if wow. he looked that up or whatever. But wow. A Christian emo band. I doubt they're from Yopon Beach. They're probably not. <laughs> probably not from Yopon Beach. <laughs> Who the hell's from Yopon Beach? I love Yopon Beach. Who the hell's from Yopon Cool Hand Luke is. I don't know. Do something. Do something. <laughs> do something. Uh, okay, let's keep it moving, man. So anyhow, we're going to do a separate video for this, but because of the YouTube thing, we're up at 130-some subscribers. We awesome. are going to do a contest. We're honing down what we're going to do for our secret prize pack. We're going to do a first, second, third place. I'm honing down what I'm going to do for the topic, and people are going to make video response. It's going to be a video, video response contest. So I'll make a video. You'll do a video response to it or whatever. And, um, and I'll draw them out of a hat, and i got a first, second, third prize, and they're going to be great. Everybody's going to love it. Uh, people are going to write newspaper articles about it. Right. And then they're going to mention Mikey Bananas in all caps. All caps. All caps. All caps. Uh, okay. All right. These 10.1 beers, dude. I'll tell you what, man. Let's get They'll get it. into you, man. Okay. They'll get into uh, you. Also wanted to mention, um, next week, speaking of Steve, who just texted us, old Steve Fever. Oh, yeah. Steve Fever's got him a birthday coming up. All right. Now, we won't mention what birthday it is, but he's got a big one coming up next week. And so uh, he should have came tonight, but we can celebrate it next week when we also do our uh, Super Bowl special. Oh, yep, yep. Big game special. You can't say Super Bowl. You got a flag. Yeah, that's copyright. Do, do, do. I just got Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Nobody knows the answer. Do, do, do. That's the big game special. The big game special. So yeah. like, what we did last week was, I mean last week, last year we had San Francisco versus Baltimore and apparently they're mouth hands for some reason. Um, <laughs> And we did like, I looked up bands from San Francisco and I looked up bands from Baltimore and uh, compared who had the dopest bands from their area. All and right. that, that determined who won the Super Bowl. Okay. So, uh, and like a dumbass last year, I used the, To Be Cute as the background for the, the, the music. I used Huey Lewis Sports. Well, that shit got flagged like, like you've not even seen. Yeah. It, not just like normal on YouTube. Oh, this, you can't play this in Germany, which it says that all the time. No. This was banned, like, everywhere. So nobody saw the Super Bowl Bummer. big game special last year. Uh. So we're going to do it again this year. So we're going to be doing bands from Seattle and bands from Denver. It's not really even damn fair. It's kind of hard. I, don't, I, don't, I can't is, think of... Is there a band from Denver? Maybe. But think of all can the bands... Can you name one? <laughs> think of all the bands from Seattle. Well, yeah, but yeah, can you name been... a band from Denver? I, I'm not done my I research. Can't. I'm not done my research yet. So it's yeah. going to... Denver people out there, get us a band. So Come on. on. On paper, it could be a lopsided affair. But in a Super Bowl, in a major sporting contest, you, never you, know can, never, gonna count. you can never count out the underdog. True. So, and speaking of the big game, yeah, just want to point out that the two states in the union 
that have legalized recreational marijuana right. have teams in the Super Bowl this year. This is true. They're going to go to a Super Bowl. Bowl. It is going to be a Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Uh, aye, aye, carrying aye. on. Carrying on. Uh, mentioned last week in our Dig of the Week, Dig of the Week, Dig of the Week segment, cameraman uh, actually picked up um, some cassette tapes. And so, inspired by that, we hooked up, um, what's that one? Our little Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers. Look at that, there's one right yeah. there. So, uh, Cassettes coming through. This inspired us to hook up the, the my cassette tape player, the... Um, the, it's a Technics, which is part of our uh, system that we got going on in the house here. I got an eighth grade as a present, and it's still a really dope system. Um, and uh, revisited some cassette tapes. And I have to tell you, Carl, um, some of these damn cassette tapes sounded damn great. I do, man. I guess it's like records where it's like there's some... Uh, but they deteriorate over time. It, true. So do records. True. But uh, I guess it depended on how things were mastered and... Yeah, how things are mastered and, and whatnot, but some of the tapes sounded really good. We had some that sounded like baloney, oh, yeah. but uh, it was really cool to hook it up and pop some stuff in that I had. Actually, uh, Carl and I played in a band together called Pork Chop. It was oh, my yeah. first band. Carl was the bass player. Second band for me. Uh, so I pulled out a cassette tape of Pork Chop, which yeah. was our band, and played that, and that was pretty cool. Brilliant. Also played some of Dying Dreams, which is a local band around here. Some oh, yeah. Live stuff. Some ODD. That yeah. actually sounded terrific. Some board tapes. Had some uh, some hip-hop promo stuff in there. So it was it was cool to dig back through the old tape box. Absolutely. And hook the, hook the shit I've back up. I've still got hundreds of tapes. I man. mean, records are still where it's at for me, but that was still really cool to, to check yeah. that out. Yeah, we got the CD player hooked up. We're yeah. still playing some stuff. Playing some stuff. And that's digital, dude. We're this is a we're, we're talking hey, warm. We're talking final. We're talking man. warm. It's warm. Great. We're talking warm. It Analog. Great. Analog. So we're gonna run through what we already played. Sounds great. It sounds great. Yeah. Here's what we're gonna, we're gonna do. Let's run through, Let's run through uh, some of the shit that we played. Some of this was some of the stuff that Carl <coughs> brought over. Uh, some of it is some stuff I had, uh, and the, some of the Carl stuff we're gonna say for a little later. Starting yeah. off, this is a record I picked up last week. Uh, didn't even play it last week. My second Freddie Hubbard album, The Hub of Hubbard. A fan freaking tastic. 72 BASF. Uh, terrific jazz record. I was really impressed with this. Yeah. Um, after I heard the first Definitely one, good album. Freddie Hubbard's one of those cats that I've now started just, uh, when I see the name, whatever record it's on, yep, okay, yeah. grabbing it. Uh, also jammed a little, uh, you guys were not familiar with uh, so much with Rare Earth jammed a rare earth ecology which is a classic 1970 on motown um really great psyche bluesy eh, i don't know what you call it good sounds good sounds man it's called good to your ear they home. they rose up and dropped off they yeah. i've got a couple of rare earth i've got a live one it's got the backpack thing but they're they're a terrific band they do big things and then they just kind of drop off the face of the earth right but um <laughs> no pun intended uh, so we got a blue and a blues record you bought. Now, I tell you yeah, before we well no, I'll just let you run run through this. Tell me about this. Okay, uh, this is uh, Sonny and Brownie. This is uh, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Oh yeah, some classic blues. Oh dude, got the gatefold. Nice. Got the old you got guys that dude over here, here, man. Just just some good down and dirty yeah. blues. Yeah. Let's see what well, we got this coming out of. We got this reprise records. Yeah. We got John Mayall on production. Oh yeah. Yeah man. Yeah. All right. That's moving early along. 70s moving on. Sweet. Put that back in your stack oh, over there. Yeah. All right. I, I followed that with a birthday present from the Bossman Beastie Boys double LP. Um, solid gold hits. Double LP came out 2005. I didn't know it was that old. I think I've said that twice already. Listen to Side B, Hey Ladies, Pass the Mic, and Open Letter to NYC. Yeah. I mean, come on. Can't deny some beasties. You don't, I don't even need to say nothing about that. Yeah. That's just legit stuff. We all grew up with it. Yeah. If you didn't, go ask your mom about it. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Came up next with uh, a little bit of the Blues Brothers. Yeah, man. Tell me about that. I grew up. This is... Uh, That's not the soundtrack from the record. This is not the, the album. soundtrack I mean, from the movie. movie. Not the soundtrack from the movie. This is the other album they did. Uh huh. Uh, Briefcase full of blues. Great. And uh, we Great heard show. Rubber Biscuit and Shotgun Blues off of that. Just a couple selections. 
great album. Blues Brothers, one of my greatest influences growing up. I watched that movie a thousand times. I can quote every line. Hell That's yeah. where the chops came from. Hell uh, yeah. John Belushi is one of my heroes. That's Hell. why I grew up. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, moving on. Followed that up with some Frigid Pink. Uh, actually, this has House of the Rising Sun, the very first song I ever played on guitar. The oh, very first. Awesome. I've got the 45 for the, actually the Frigid Pink version, not the Animals version. Um, trying to get a, a year on this. I can't remember. Um, what do we got going on down here? Parrot Records. I don't know what year this okay. is. Parrot Records. Oh yeah, yeah that looks just like the old 45. But it's a it's a great um, great psych rock record. Um, I won't show it off. Yeah. Uh, also played man one of my we just played one song and it's one of my favorite songs that I own. Big Eddie oh, Harris fan. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. No, we're gonna bring it up. We're gonna bring yeah. it up. Um, big Eddie Harris fan. But who it? But this is live at Newport. Comes equipped with the uh, Kmart sticker on the top. This is um, live at Newport. And this says right here, this album was recorded live at the Newport Jazz Festival in 1970 on Atlantic. And the very first song, the only one we played tonight, is called The Children's Song. And uh, that's that weird one we played earlier where he starts with the... Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, that one very weird Eddie Harris record and I, I listened to one the other day I actually passed on I will Eddie Harris has done some things where he's gone with Les McCann uh, like Cold Duck Time yeah, uh, the, the, the some Les McCann. Sw, uh, Swiss Movements well I've got two uh, records where Eddie Eddie Harris and Les McCann play together nice. and uh, it, it's straight as jazz as you want to get then this one is like weird electronica saxophone just out there kind of fusion yeah. kind of stuff from Eddie Harris I put on one the other day. I had this guy at the record store. I'm like, hey, will you play this one? Because I actually got one that was a little slower for my taste. It right. was squ quality stuff, but I didn't want to pay, you know, 6 $7 for something to slow dance with my girl in the room with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I had him put it on before because it had a cool cover, and I'm like, oh, I may buy it. There was a reggae track on it. There was a slow jam track. There was one, and he's all over the place. Ping pong, boom, ping, all over the place. Yeah, he, he basically ran. Some of those recently. Yeah, and it was sort of neat, but I'm like, yeah, I don't know that this is what exactly what I'm looking for. Anyhow, tell me about this uh, Johnny oh, no, Taylor. No, no, no. Before we get to that Johnny Taylor, you're skipping that uh, perpetual uh, that Rufus Reed. So tell me about we it. We played that right there with that. Uh, yep. What the hell did you, did you just have? The Harris. Yeah. Now tell me about this perpetual. All right. Troll. So Rufus Reed is a bass player. He played with uh, who is it? Johnny Harris. What's his name? Eddie Harris. Eddie Harris. Yeah. Pretty much all the Ru Eddie Harris records, he, he played bass. Rufus Reed was playing bass on pretty much all the Eddie Harris records. Mm-hmm. And this is his breakout album, Quentin Perpetual Stroll. Perpetual Stroll. And we, heard, we heard that one song, Perpetual Stroll, off this one. And uh, it's, some, it's some good preform jazz. Three musicians. Rufus Reed. We got a man on bait. We got uh, Eddie Gladden and Kirk Lightsey. Eddie Gladden on drums and Kirk Lightsey on piano. And it's just, it's just three piece. It, 81 on Teresa Records. Yeah. Teresa? Teresa Records. Not seen that label. Um, pretty neat, man. It's, it's, Carl's actually turned this over. It's a little bit underground label, but yeah, this is uh, this is a gift to uh, Mike and cameraman tonight. Brought this up for him. It's not really my bag, but... Uh, they hooked me up with the Jimmy Buffett album the other time I was up here, so uh, repaying the favor. Okay. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Stop down recording for a second. We gotta we gotta stop the recording just to uh, make a little edit point. Edit point. Stand by. Speaking of, you know, earlier we were talking about uh, Dr. Deadwax. Exactly. One of his recent videos, he was talking about an Elvin Young record, mm -hmm. and uh, it had a uh, uh, Jan Hammer on it. Hmm. Jan. Yan Hammer? Yan Hammer. Yan Hammer? Yeah, yeah, Yan Hammer on it. And I, that's one of those names I've learned from, uh, he's played the Mahavishnu Orchestra and some other cats oh, like that. Right. Uh, when I see those names, same way with like Freddie Hubbard. Right. I see Freddie Hubbard. Freddie it, Hubbard. It could be some random record called the the blah, 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 blues mm -hmm. uh, nugget fives. And you look it up and it's like, oh, Freddie Hubbard, that's shit. That's like uh, Billy Cobb. I'm going to break out later, uh, John Mayall. Yeah. see his name all over a bunch of blues and jazz yep. stuff. Yeah. 
So, How about them? Anyhow, we went right to uh, that little Johnny Taylor. Tell me about that. This is some Johnny Taylor, tailored in silk. This is uh, one of my new score I just got. Some of the best Johnny Taylor songs right here. Uh, solid, baby. I know it's starting all over again. We heard uh, Cheaper to Keeper. Oh, that's a solid uh, track, man. The Married Man song out there, hey, you know it's Cheaper to Keeper. It's Cheaper to Keeper than, yeah. to, uh, than to do what else? Something Time you get to leave it. Oh, it's cheaper to keep her than it is to leave her. That's work to live by. Because you're going to pay some alimony. You're going to do some time. All right. We'll keep it moving, man. What is I, just, Tell me about I just this. discovered this boy right here. We got Artie Blue Boy White. And uh, this was in my big score I just got the other week. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, this cover right here is one of the most fabulous soul covers I've ever seen. Let's bring it in close. Uh, Let's look at that phone. Let's look well, at that phone. I bottle me, of Hennessy. I want me a phone like that. I need a phone like that. Yeah, that's uh, that's what you need. That's what you, you get need right the ladies, you got a phone like that. Yeah. You got you a phone like that? You're probably calling some bitches. Yeah. I mean, yeah you but, look at that girl in the corner. She ain't listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we heard Don't Pet My Dog off that one. Don't Pet My Dog. Don't Pet My Dog. All right, hey, we followed that up. With the OG original um, Black Sabbath yep. original press, man, this is the real deal. First record, uh, first Black Sabbath. We jammed one side of it. I mean, that's the real deal shit. Um, I mean, who don't like that early Black shit? Got a dick of Black Sabbath. Oh man, <laughs> it's so cool. And the earlier it is, the better I like it. Absolutely. I think so. Um, that one and Paranoid. Or, I've got Paranoid up there, yeah. Or the two. And, and I've been in probably three or four different bands that have played three or four different songs off of Paranoid. Oh, yeah. Out five in public in front of people and everything. Yeah. Follow that up with a little Nas. This is Illmatic, of course. This is a essential hip-hop album. Always hip hop going there. Always appreciate yeah. the the Early boss. 2000s. The boss man hooked us up with three dope ass hip hop records for my birthday. That's, great. That's one of them. That's one of those men you gotta have. That he is. also hooked me up with that Beastie Boys we were talking about earlier. Also Black Moon, which uh, we played. Uh, That's where I'm slipping lately is uh, I don't have much hip hop, man. Yeah, it, and it comes and goes. Sometimes yeah. I've noticed in this local area, yeah. a lot of the hip hop that turns up in the local crates is whack baloney. Oh, yeah. Not even like cool early uh, early 80s stuff, but yeah. like stuff I, I'm just like, I don't want that. I got a little Goody Mob that I'm proud of. Oh, no. Goody Mob is great. I picked up a fat, I picked up a fat Boys last week. Real proud of that. i kind of been waiting on that. And I've got some, I got some, that. got some Bismarck key. I mean, so it's, yeah, really? yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's okay, it, but you got to bide your time, but it's not something you can just walk in around here and pick up a lot of. Oh, no. I mean, Mel Torme all day long. All you you want to beef up your Herb Albert collection? Oh, Easy. Yeah. I can help you out, son. Hey, Herb Albert. Uh, $5. But I like it. I like it. Tell me about this. Right. What is so it? a blues compilation? We jumped into a little blues project. And this is, uh. This is kind of a, uh, the Blues Project actually became a band, huh. but they, uh, it began with this album as a compilation of some of the best white urban blues artists around the Chicago area in 1970. Inappropriate. Racist. 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 It says it right here, man. I'm just reading. Yeah, but it says Negro. Hey, 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 I'm just reading the liner notes. Yeah, but it said Negro on one of those. Things. It does say Negro on it. Come on, come on. It does say Negro on it. Hey. And what? Why it both? I'm just Man. reading. Racist. Push. Hey, 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 hey. Racist. But yeah, a uh, little blues project there. That's uh, Dave that Van Ronk, John Croner, Jeff Mulder, Dave Ray, Danny Cobb, <laughs> Ian Buchanan, Mark. Ulstra, Eric Bunchman, <laughs> uh, and yeah. Mike's doing stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a so, great uh, record, man. That's a it's great just compilation. It's standard blues, man. It's a uh, it's kind of a get together of several blues artists in the Chicago, Detroit area, just getting together and throwing it down. On That's what I'm talking standards. about. Hey, speaking of that, we're going to continue on that blues and soul tip, uh, and I'm going to do a special edition of Dig of the Week. As in, I'm turning this whole mother over to my man Carl here because I know, I know you've had a, uh, a recent dig experience uh, <laughs> that was that was pretty pretty damn decent. Oh, and, it was decent. And we're going to talk a little about a, a little bit about it. And 
it, it, it'll breach a subject that a lot of us uh, vinyl people maybe are familiar with, and that is perusing the local Craigslist ads sure. for uh, records. And a lot of times, um, you will find some gems on Craigslist. That's true. Uh, I'm cleaning out my mom's house. There's 200 LPs. Come get them for 20 bucks. I just want to get rid of them. Blah right. blah blah. And you may get a lot of baloney that way. You may find a few dope records that way. You may. Um, there are also some people that will say, and it's legendary. I've got these classic rock albums. I mean, I've got, I've got Eagles, and I've got, I've got Fleetwood Mac, and I've got you know some Skinner, whatever. And then you're yeah. like all good bands, and then they're like, oh, I need like, I got 20 records. I'm gonna need like two, three hundred dollars. I mean, these are classic rock bands. These are all classic bands. Yeah, but you can buy all those albums yeah. for two to three dollars. They're a piece people from your local used record yeah, store. Yeah, people that just don't—they don't know, but they, they know those know. are good bands, and good bands yeah. don't always equal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Right. So no, real lucky. If you haven't paid eleven dollars for all your records, you're not true collector. All of them. All of them. What? All, of them. What? all <laughs> records should be at least eleven dollars. For or just you're the, not a real collector. For the inner. I'm not paying eleven dollars for her dollar. No. I love all of them. I, I, I love all right. Music. All of them. So. Yeah, all of them together. Well, the Craigslist thing. So you saw you saw this dig on a Craigslist. I was browsing Craigslist looking for vinyl, just used music, you know, music for sale, whatever. Scrolling through there, found a guy had uh, it was listed. It said uh, 55 Soul and Blues LPs for 145 dollars. Uh -huh. Right. And uh, so I hit the guy up immediately. Contacted yeah. him. Uh, Older guy, you know, probably in his early 50s, um, had his own record collection, told me he had a couple thousand of his own. Okay. Um, more into the psych rock thing. So he wasn't selling his whole collection? Oh, it wasn't even his. Oh, okay. He didn't care for blues or soul at all. I mean, he was into the rock thing. That was his bag. Okay. So he didn't even want these. These were his late uncle's collection all right. that he had inherited. Wow. And he told me, and when and you I went, always get a better deal when somebody is not into the genre. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I went to meet him, and uh, we met at a storage unit, and uh, he wound up having 85 records out there, and wanted 200 bucks for them. So uh, I started filming with them, man. You know, um, a lot of blues. Uh, yeah. Saw some BB Kings. Oh yeah. ZZ uh, Hill. Uh huh. Denise Keep going. Sal, Aretha Franklin. Um, uh, some Artie of the stuff White. we heard earlier, Artie White, um, the uh, Joe Tur Big Joe Turner. Oh, yeah, Big Joe Turner. Big Joe the Turner. The Kansas City shouting yeah. stuff. Yeah, got some Big Joe Turner in there. Um, a lot, of good, order lot of good stuff, man, a lot of good stuff. And uh, started pulling them out, looking at them, and they were in immaculate condition. So it's like collector condition. I mean collector condition, yeah. The, the covers... Good to very good plus. Uh -huh. A little wear on the covers, but the albums themselves, like new. Oh, wow. I mean, for the most, 9 out of 10, like new. You get one that's scratched up. The Aretha's a little rough. Got a couple yeah. others. My all right. Don't give it all away. Let's get into it. Yeah. Let's get into it. All right. All right. So, we saw a few we played earlier right. there. Uh, we've already been through a few of those. So, we're going to get in here. We got... Uh, we got Filet of Soul. This is a oh, yeah. Stax compilation Woo. out of the 70s. Stacks, Love baby. the cover on this. Yeah, look mermaid. at that. That's good stuff. But uh, we're going to get into this a little here in a little uh -huh. while. And uh, picked up, uh, Mike is really into this. Oh, man. I didn't know about him until I scored man. this album and started listening to it. That we got Gate really Mouth Brown. Gate this Mouth is a Brown. double live LP. Double live. That's big time. The ca what's it called? At the Cowboy Bar. At the Cowboy Bar. In man, Texas. Check it out. That's got to be good. There's some, uh, some deep soul right here. Uh -huh. O.B. Wright. Uh, my father actually knew about this one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not I'm not hip to but, that. I'm not hip to that. But the O.B. Wright, that's some deep soul. Cool and, color. Uh, you got to love those lips with the lips with the popsicle cup. Yeah, look oh, at that. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. What else you got? Bartolo. Oh, Junior Parker. What? Hey, Little envelope, Junior Parker Blues. Oh, is this the envelope and brought oh, an envelope? envelope? The envelope brought an envelope. Hey, cameraman, hook us up with this. we got to show this. The envelope it's brought the an envelope. envelope, for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. So the envelope brought an envelope. Brought an envelope of good music. 
Junior Parker. Yeah, Junior Parker's what it's at. Can you call me, uh, Carl? And then a little cartoon clip art envelope comes up on the screen. Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, just so you know. A couple standards mixed in. Now, we just brought a little sampling of the whole 85 LPs. Yeah, you yeah, know, we yeah, couldn't bring right. them all, but, uh, you know, a little sample of classics. Oh, Aretha so Franklin right, right you there. You that. The Supremes. Yep, I've got that Supremes. You've got yep. the mono, I've got the stereo. Yeah, we were comparing this earlier. Mike yeah. has this one. He's got stereo, I've got mono. Mike the Oh, and uh, we're going to get into this a little bit. Denise oh, LaSalle. Denise LaSalle. This is good blues That's quality right stuff. here. Now, how old is this, Carl? Tell me. This little... is uh, Denise LaSalle. This one is 80... Oh, crap. Where is it? It's... Uh, That's all right. It's, That's definitely, all right. A, it's definitely 80s. Yeah. What re what label is that? That's on Malico. This is Malico, 80, baby. This is 86. 86 on Malico. Got a lot on Malico. Okay. Malico Records is something we got to talk about. A lot of people don't know about Malico. You know, people, the main, uh, the main soul label is you got, you got your Motown, of course. And soul. Which is. Philly Groove. Soul. You got Philly. And you got, uh, Stax Volt. Sure. Out of Memphis. Well, Malico, out of Jackson, Mississippi. Okay. Deep started, South, baby. Deep South. Started in the late 60s, early 70s. Didn't go anywhere for a while. And, uh... Yeah. Finally, in the mid-70s, Malico started signing a lot of good artists. Denise LaSalle, ZZ Hill. Oh, yeah, Blues I got my, ZZ, ZZ Hill. ZZ Hill passed That's away in 1984. Yeah. He was one of the best blues men around. Oh, Nighthawks. Here we go. Got the Nighthawks here. Nighthawks out of Bethesda, Maryland, still playing today. Yeah, man, I 40, got some Nighthawks. 40 years in the trenches. That's solid. That's solid stuff. Uh, what else you got come out here? I discovered, I never heard of before, John Mayall, Back to the Roots, double LP. Interesting thing about this is Eric Clapton plays lead guitar on most of the tracks. Nice. And this is 1971. Uh -huh. On Polydor Records. F yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Picked up Boy. a little Lattimore, also on Malico. Man, look at that. That's Jared Curl, that's baby. Curl on that. Whoop, whoop. I'm going to hear a little bit of this. Bad wrist. That must get a little bit of that hair, man. Doorknob hits you with a good Lord split. Oh, that's a great uh, song, too. Uh, and some good, some good old blues right here. The Johnny Otis Show. Oh, that's good stuff. That's some good straight blues right here. Nice. Hey, what we got going on down, uh, down in the crate that we've not played? Oh, we down got a in couple the crate. Of, oh, yeah. Oh, I got my A couple, couple of the uh, fresh. Watch dicks. your mic. Don't let it pull you, Carl. There we go. Got it. Got, got it. A couple there. A couple away from the uh, the blues uh, genre. Yeah. Some stuff you guys have also picked up recently. Tell us a little bit about this. This is great stuff. New scores, uh, probably two of our favorite albums ever. Yeah. My wife's favorite album. Yay. Slayer. Oh, oh yeah. Seasons in the Abyss. Everybody enjoy that? That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, I love Slayer. That's awesome. This is now this is the recent Slayer reissues which have gotten rave reviews for the oh, repress yeah. value. Oh, These wow. things are done in a way that sound the quality terrific. is amazing. We're yeah. going to hear a song or two off yeah. that later. We're going to get into that. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, and this is actually an original 1982 pressing. I got used. Pay 10 bucks you got, for it. Call, call got used. used. Yeah, I got, I got used, but I got used for the Dead Kennedys. Oh, good. Oh, that's plastic yeah. surgery disasters right there. All that, all that picture the, on the back, that's the yeah. Natural Born Killers. Flip it around to the back, that was also used in Natural Born Killers. Dead Kennedys used it first. Oh, yeah. You remember that, cameraman? The Smiley Face Water Tower? Yeah. Yep. That's got my favorite <laughs> Dead Kennedy song on it. Forest fire. Oh yeah. I think I'll start a forest, forest fire. fire. Oh, we're yeah. gonna hear that in a little while. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, stuff. that's uh, and we also heard uh, Hank three, which I believe is still up on there. Oh yeah, pull that guy. Somewhere around here. This we is got, the uh, brand new Hank. We just we just heard this right before we came live. This is brand new Hank three. Look at that. 
just released the yeah. 2013 hold release. Hold this, hold this guy up. And let, no, let's get the gate full with the Edelbrock in there. Oh, look yeah, at that, let's get yeah. that Edelbrock intake. Yeah, yeah, people we, know about the Edelbrock. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm a big Hank the, Hank the Third fan. Uh, I'm a big fan of all the Hanks, but uh, Hank Man, Three has got to go. He's a little on. more like us, and I don't want to get too much that further into it other than that he's a little more like us. Exactly. Uh, and I'll just kind of look. That's some great Hank Three right there. So this there. came out like this year or just, just this past year? This is 2013. Yeah, that's good this stuff. This is his newest album, um, Double LP, 16 tracks. Um, we only heard here. that one one couple we, of tracks, but it was yeah. Oh, we man. heard a couple of tracks. Yeah, it's copyright 2013. Um, that's last year, man. That's so last year. That's so last year. Yeah, totally. but it, right. hey, it's not side numbers. It's tire numbers. Okay, so right, that pretty much covers. That. Okay, wait. Here's what we're gonna do. 52's the mic. 52's the mic. Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Calling an audible. We're going, so to speak, right now. No break. No break. Uh, Omaha. Uh, Omaha. Uh, hey, we should burn this guy. How we burn this guy? <laughs> uh -oh, what here we go, folks. Uh, what we have here is the sound uh -huh. of a tasty beverage. Look we, out. we have us a Fentiman's Cherry Tree Cola provided by the Bossman. This cola comes from our friends in Canada. What? Uh -huh. Dead wax. I'm looking at you, my man. Ingredients, carbonated water, fermented ginger root, extra ginger. I, I can't read this. Cane sugar. Okay, that's all I need to see. I can, no, they're not, they're not working too well. Cola flavor. This is this is legit cherry cola. Brilliant. So um, let's get, I'll tell you what, I'll can teams with us. We ain't got to uh, mouth hump each other. All right. <laughs> Should I get a palladium straw? I'll just get a straight pour going on. Oh, that's terrific. We tried the regular cola version of this. What is that? What the hell is Carl doing? What the hell is Carl doing? Oh my God, what was that? That was a straight bar. Carl just made this the, the most the awkward God. YouTube. <laughs> this is the most awkward YouTube video ever produced. We're going viral, bitch. That I've seen this viral. That was viral. I've seen those girls. I've, I've seen those girls eat each other's dookie, and that no, was wait, more. Wait, awkward. Hey, hey, that was more awkward. You, have you ever done that before? Or is that the first time? First time. <laughs> We're going viral. Call, hey, call Toss Point out right now. I'll tell you what, go no, Toss right now. On the real, on the real. This is, uh, we tried the that regular. That is goddamn tasty. That's yeah, we, how you avoid we tried the regular. We tried the regular uh, cola uh, not too long ago. And it was a very good uh, hard, eat, hard biting cola. Mm. Uh, this is the same thing, but it's got a nice very cherry, cherry flavor to it. Yeah. Uh, but all mm. very raw tasting. Let's hold that guy up. Bring it um, around. Bring it around. And it's Stop got that, right? it, it's got a very uh, sharp flavor to it, just like the cola. But it's the way that uh, as I get older, if I'm going to drink a soda, I don't drink a lot of sodas. No, I, I don't think, like a lot of sodas. I think the uh, I give the impression because we do a soda speak segment that. Um, I drink colas a lot of time. I don't drink colas. I drink a lot of water. Uh, but um, on a drink Friday a night, I like a nice... When I do drink a cola, I want it to be a legit cola. And I'm not just going to grab a regular whatever is in the fridge. I want to get one that's uh, craft brewed, just like my beers, and, uh, you know, use real ingredients yeah. and good good shit. This this falls into that category. It does. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So I'll tell you what, we're going to wrap up, I'm we're going to wrap up the so uh, to speak, we're going to go right yeah. into a damn chip chat. Omaha! 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 Did you read it? Nope. Call the school. All right. <laughs> Here we go. We got, uh, we got a couple of, uh, 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 return event monitors. What am I talking about? Return a couple of return players to the program, um, this is a uh, cameraman had these in the house. This is the Utz Wavy Pit Barbecue. Um, well, that's scraps. It's scraps, but it's, it's open bag. That just shows how good they were. Try mm. Utz Wavy Pit Barbecue They're potato chips gone. made with a perfect blend of spices for a down-home pit barbecue flavor that is sure to satisfy your snack cravings. I'm trying to pick up the other flavor that's in this, other than barbecue. Uh, it almost tastes like sour cream and onion mixed with barbecue. Let's we'll see if it we can find it. Like potatoes uh, and things like that. We'll see if we can find the mystery flavor. What the hell is that? Hang on. Let's hold those guys up. What the hell is that? I got the barbecue. 
the barbecue's there, and then there's like a little something on the other end of it. Sour cream and onion. You get it? It's, yeah. Sour cream and onion. You think they're mixing the two? Mm-hmm. Man, let me tell you something. I eight, think they're throwing a hint of sour cream and onion in there under the barbecue. It kind of does. Eight-year-old Mikey Bananas sour would, be, cream of onion. would be ecstatic about that. Oh, if, yeah. If you told eight-year-old Mikey Bananas that there's going to be a sour cream and onion and barbecue mixed potato, potato chip, <laughs> yeah, he would have lost his damn shit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not so, bad, not bad. Not bad. Cameraman also had, these have been on the program before. We're going to try them again just because it's a little something different for us. And it's, it's, it's a good message to hammer home. Um, it's a sweet potato chip. Oh, These wow. are very, um, yeah, get into that. they're very yeah. basic and light and not as not quite as it bad for like, you. It tastes like what it is. Ingredients, whole sweet potatoes sliced and cooked in 100% pure yep. peanut oil <laughs> with salt added. No preservatives added. Contains no hydrogenated fats. Gluten-free food. A lot of cats are on the gluten-free shit nowadays. Yeah, huh? This is right on that Can't tip. Can't it, but... Whatever. They're kind of bland on purpose, but sometimes if you're eating you a sandwich, mm. you just want you, you don't necessarily need something crazy, mm. crazy salty like uh, up in your grill. You need something that's uh, just crunchy to go with your sandwich. This if, one, I'm go, if I'm going to that effect, I'm going with like a Cape Cod original like to, good, for the I mean, bland. I'm, good. I don't know, man. I'm, I I'm recommend really it. Really good. Actually, yeah, I recommend... Good. Using the least amount of salt you can possibly get away with, yeah. and ever and everybody's got salt on the table. If they're not salty enough for you, add effing salt to it for crying out loud. <laughs> hey, try your corn with no salt. You'll be amazed. <laughs> try your corn with no salt, no butter. You will be amazed. How try everything with no salt, that. and then work your way forward. Ah, uh, put butter on it and just unsalt it. Yeah. Okay. So. Hmm. Mm. Uh, while you're tearing that up. Okay. No no nothing. Oh, well, we, got, we got some Cape Cod here. I'm a fan of Cape Cod. This is what I was really working my way towards. Cameron, I'm not Cameron. Bossman, the old boss man, mm -hmm. brought these to us from up north when he went up there for the holidays. Probably got them at Wegmans, which is a really dope grocery store up there. Um, it says it's kind of like Walmart, but they have like top of the line stuff and big and all the way around like they do. Oh, the like Costco? Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> but, but no, but no, but like uh, better. It's like Harris Teeter kind of quality. Wow. But like big, like Costco. Weird. So this is this is the crab chip, okay? It's crab back bay chip. crab seasoning. Now, uh, I have had and I'm very familiar with the Utz uh, Old Bay crab seasoning stuff, right? Yeah. The crab chip, known as the crab chip. Everybody loves that. Everybody's a big fan of that. Yeah. The, you don't crab like the crab meatball. chip? I love it. I like it. I, don't like I love it. it. Most people think, oh, this is what crab dish is like. No, it's, no, it's, 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 it's the Old, old Bay. Bay. It's like the Old Bay place. It's like Old Bay. <laughs> so here's a different take on the Back Bay crab seasoning. Bay right. So we'll see what, they, what their take on it is. Not had these before now. Let's, let's check them out. Books. Check them out. Check them out. Oh. And yes, oysters taste like low tide smells. Yeah. And I love them both. <laughs> oh. These are good. Mm. These, these smell like low tide. Oh, yeah, they do. Like oh, Hold those smells smells like low tide right there. Yeah. But they're good. Mm. I'll tell you, it's got a the same kind of flavor as the Utz crab chip. Hmm. But a lot more subtle, and on a okay. kettle, it's subtle and on a kettle type chip. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a fan of kettle chips. Sure. Is this record ever? Mm -hmm. No. Do talking. So, Who knows? So uh, these are good. I would have to recommend these. It's a lighter mm. version of the, the the crab chip. Can be a little intense. There's a lot. Basically, I'm saying there's a lot of junk on the chips. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. There's a lot of powder. These are lighter on the power, powder, but on a more kettle chip. Mm. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Light flavor. It's better. Better. It's not as low tide. Also. Good crunch. You don't want too much low tide. Yeah, smell it. You don't think it's low tide. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, it smells like mm. small tide. So, the thing is, you want some low tide, but you don't yeah, want too much Yeah, I can taste some tidal marsh in that. But I'll tell mm. you, also, to keep in mind, these are better, and I will say that. The Cape Cod ones are better than the Uts, 
Yeah. They're also probably on regular price, twice as expensive. Keep that yeah. in mind. So it may be a sometimes treat. You see what's on sale. Your your regular Utz crab chips on sale. Bomb. Next week maybe the Cape Cod will be on sale. Maybe. That's how shit runs. Don't be an idiot. All right. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. Buy Always what's on, on sale. sale. All right. Let's wrap up this edition All of right. uh, Chip Chat. Chips. Man, really appreciate Carl and Tiffany coming by, bringing this huge ass box of um, mm. blues records. We're mm. gonna jam. Uh, we're gonna jam. Uh, it's a bunch more of those and some other stuff I got and some all kinds of things. We already done that, huh? And so to speak, we did so to speak. Yeah, we did all that. We did. We I did. I did all kinds of people. No. Nah. We're gonna jam some more yeah. blues records, a little bit of soul. We're gonna. Uh, We'll play some Slayer. We're going to get crazy with a little bit of Slayer. Little Dead Kennedys. Little Dead Kennedys for the punk thumper. I think I'll start a forest. Yeah. Everybody's got a little punk in them out there. Time to bring it out. Yeah. All right. Hey, we appreciate everybody joining us. Thanks to all our new subscribers on YouTube and uh, all the new people that are following us on on, uh, Ustream. Man, it's been so cool that all these new people have checked us out. You stream. I hope you come back, man. We have a good time. We're no experts. We're no geniuses of records. But we like to have, on Friday nights, guys like to jam some music. It's time to get down and get real and jam some music and have a good time. And that's what we do here on Grown Man Record Night. That's our mantra. That's what we're all about. So, for Call the Envelope, Cameraman, Mikey Bananas, we're saying good night here from Grown Man Record Night. We hope to see you on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Machete Miller. And uh, we'll see you next week for a Super Bowl special here live on Grown Man Record Night.